Well, do you guys see anything different from this? Because, like, you know, you guys can hear the difference, too, in the audio. We got a new microphone. We got the, uh, the Shure SM7B. I got a little upgrade. If you guys can see, too, in the back wall. Uh, you know, it's an empty black wall, which means, you know, we're in a different area. Uh, you know, just wanted to say that Robert and I have actually moved into a different area. Uh, and now we're, you know, that's why things look, look a little bit more different. That's why you hear a little bit more different, too. Got a new microphone, like I had mentioned. Uh, got a new special guest right here as well for episode 26. You know, I had to get Corey Bones on right here. So once again, hey. please give a good welcome to Corey Bones. Because once again, this is episode 26 of the Spotlight series where we... Where we uh, showcase a bunch of upcoming platforms, music, and artists, and uh, talk about all the training to- uh, topics in dance music. And once again, Corey Bones, thank you, all, uh, thank you so much for coming to the podcast. I appreciate it. Shit, thank you for having me. And fucking shout out, lose the tempo. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. No, dude, thanks for coming through, bro. I mean, last time we seen each other was um, uh, uh, was at the uh, Lowen show where you played for uh, uh, for the Bass in Your Face show. Yeah, yep, man, that was the last yep. time. And then from there, you know, we're like, yeah, we're going to put you on the Lucid Temple episode. And that way, you know, we could learn a little bit more about you as an uh, artist and, you know, let your fans and your audience know, uh, get to know you a little bit more, uh, you know, as a personality and everything that you'll be doing in the near future as well. But before we get more into that, I actually just wanted to uh, do a little uh, segment with you that we do here at Lucid Temple called Quick Hits. And it's essentially just a personality uh, test. Uh, a timed personality test, pretty much just bringing out like what's your favorite interest and stuff like that. Uh, we will be timing you just so uh, don't think about it too long. You know, just think what comes up on your head. And then, you know, after that uh, quick hit segment, you know, we'll get uh, deep into more about you as an artist and like uh, anything else that you'll be uh, doing. So, uh, you ready, my dude? How you feeling, though? Shit, I'm feeling good and I'm down for all of this. Let's do it. There you go, bro. All right, well, here we go. Well, let's get it. Once again, episode 26 of the Spotlight Series here with Corey Bones. You guys can watch on YouTube and listen on SoundCloud. You guys can go and click that link on the description if you guys are on YouTube and want to switch over. And all oh, same thing on SoundCloud. If you're on SoundCloud want to watch on YouTube, we'll have the information on the description so you can watch on YouTube as well. So here we go. Let's get it. Here comes Quick Kids. So question number one, what is your social media handle? Social media is Corey Bones. That's C-O-R-E-Y-B-O-N-E-Z. For sure. Now, favorite DJ software? Uh, definitely Ableton, since that's what I'm working on. Oh, for sure, for sure. Now, or you said DJ software? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, Rekordbox. Oh, but for production sure. software is Ableton. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Uh, I was gonna ask you that after too. But that's that's good. Uh, age you started at? Uh, I started DJing and producing about almost two years ago, so. Okay. Hasn't been too long, but I definitely. I made some big leaps All right, to get sure. where I'm at right now. Exactly. That's good to hear. All right. Favorite genre of uh, EDM? House music. House hey. music. All right. Favorite streaming platform? <laughs> streaming platform? Yeah. Spotify. Okay. Uh, favorite BPM? 128. Hey, there you go. <laughs> uh, special skill? Special skill. Shit. I don't know. Oh, shit. It's all good. Just... Did you want to just skip that one then? Yeah, we can skip oh, that we'll one. I'll skip it. This got to be a special skill. I got you. Uh, first festival. First festival was Beyond Wonderland 2013. Why? Uh, I got invited to go, and I was, I've always been down to go to one. I just never had anybody that was down because... Most of my friends were fucking with hip hop and shit. So, oh, yeah. Like, they weren't I, into that shit. I can relate I was, to that. Mm hmm. All right, gotcha. I was always down to go to one, so I was like, yeah, I'm definitely going. Let's run that. <laughs> show. Yeah, all right. So what is your dream festival? Uh, dream festival? Mm-hmm. My own festival. Oh, damn. Hey, I like I like that <laughs> answer. I hella like that answer, for sure. <laughs> hey, well, maybe in the EDM Confessions, if there's a card that you get that's kind of related to that question, I'd really like to hear uh, a lineup or some shit. So uh, we'll get to that later, for hey. sure. I'm definitely going to, regardless of whatever you get, I'm going to ask that shit at the end of everything because I want to know what lineup you want to get. Uh, but that's that's it. That's Quick Hits. Uh, you know, big shout out to Corey Bones for coming through and doing Quick Hits. Um, man, you're the first episode that we do in this uh, in this area right here, man. So Hey, I'm, I'm glad to be a part of it. Oh, dude, I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you're here. And I'm glad that, you know, the fans are able to tune in as well to get to know you more as an artist and more as a an DJ. And... 
Uh, well, to start off, man, you know, let's just get right into it. Uh, you know, who's Corey Bones? You know, how uh, how did you get into DJing? You know, what kind of got you passionate into EDM? And what led you into kind of getting into DJing and then into production? Uh, how did it all start? So pretty much it started out with that first festival. And, you know, like I just fell in love with the scene. And I became a dancer, like a shuffler. I fucking got down all the time. Like me and the homies would fucking be in the circles shuffling and shit so i just wanted to i wanted to be the one to create that moment for those those people out there that are really out there vibing to the music oh okay i got you and so like i want and then like i play fucking it's it's kind of funny but i play dj hero like fucking i mastered that shit i was trying to fucking i was trying to just like I just had fun doing that, like, and it gave me, like, a, a motivation to, like, just fucking start doing it re- for real, like, plus, like, I've had people around me that were doing it, so I just thought, why not, why not learn from them, like, you know? <clears throat> okay. And then I just got my foot in the door and started working from there. All right, sounds good. And then, yeah. uh, Corey Bones, like, you know, I don't know if you, you were trying to ask, like, how I came about Corey Bones or like what? No, no. Well, I was just more so like you know who is Corey Bones? Like you know if no one if no one knows who you are, I just want to get I just want to touch on like uh, you know who you are as just like as an artist like in general. But like uh, yeah, but how did you come up uh, come up with like Corey Bones like the name like uh, how did um, that how was that inspired? So I kind of fucking always fucked with like skeletons and skulls and shit. So like. I got you. I just thought that, you know, that shit would be a good fit. Like, plus, I wanted to, like, choose a brand that, like, you know, everybody can relate to. Like, we all have a fucking skeleton. Like, I'm just, I'm just an alien that's, like, fucking out here. I'm just like everybody else. Like, I'm this fucking outcast, but I'm still like everybody else. I fucking, underneath, we all, underneath the skin, like, we just all have a skeleton, you know? No, you're right. You're right. At the end of the day, like, we're Bones. True. <laughs> and you're Corey Bones, dude. And you're this Corey is Corey Bones, Bones yes. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. Hey, you know what? You sharing your experience with, like, how you felt when you were, like, mastering DJ Hero and uh, kind of, like, wanting to do that type of stuff, like, for reals. <laughs> I had the similar experience when I was, uh, like, I've, I was actually, like, competitively playing Guitar Hero. Like when yeah, I was younger, bro. Yeah. So I played Guitar Hero and like I was mastering like fucking tracks on like Expert 100%. <laughs> yeah. And like I would competitively play. And like I was like getting really good at the game to where like at a point I was like, dude, I want to pick up an actual guitar and like becoming a rock man. I think I got <laughs> from a video game. I was like, dude, I think I got it. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember I remember uh, uh, a week later when I had that epiphany of like, yeah, I think I could do this shit as like an actual rock uh, rock star. I picked up the guitar and I was like, dude, this shit is hard as fuck. Like, <laughs> fuck this shit. I don't know anything about what right. key we're in. Like, I just know how to strum and that's it. And I just went back to the video game, you know. I just, you know, kept losing in those competitions. because yeah, not that Motherfuckers easy. be good, though. Motherfuckers be good. <laughs> and uh, uh, I, I, it's just crazy how you had that similar experience, too. But like, it was with DJ Hero. And that, and that led you to kind of get more into the actual uh, physical DJ and stuff. And, you know, le- getting more into to Corey Bones and everything. Yeah. Plus, like, back in school, like... I would be on, uh, what is it, GarageBand in class, just fucking trying to make a beat or something. Like, oh, okay. I wasn't even thinking about really doing music at that point, but like, I thought I was just making beats for like the homies so that they could rap and shit. Like, yeah, okay, for sure. It's just something quick. Hey, make yeah. some beat, and then like they'll just start uh, freestyling on it. Yeah, it was definitely fucking not anywhere near what I thought I would be getting myself into today. So, no, I got you. So what was uh so when did uh, everything all started? Was this like uh like I mean specifically with Corey Bones like with the project was it uh was this like kind of like a year or two ago? Like when did this all start for you? Well, just as a DJ and producer, it was like two years ago. But sorry, fucking <laughs> yeah, bro, no no rush. Um, I can't actually remember if I chose it as as a rap name at first or what, but I just, I just been with that brand since then. Like, I don't know. Like Corey Bones is, is me. You know what I'm I, saying? I, I, I like, I like, I like the touch of it. Like, I like, I like how it sounds. 
Uh, I mean, I, I, I know I've seen you play a lot of shows, bro. Like, when did you start getting? When did you start playing shows? Uh, you know, when did you? When, when was it that that transition when you were like, okay, I'm learning how to DJ. Now I wanna, I wanna start playing these shows. I wanna start, you know, making my name out there and everything. You know, when did all that start? And, uh, you know, how was all that process for you? You know, just that transition. So, the first equipment that I I DJed on was actually um, a tractor. So. The homie gave me the software, and then the, another homie gave me the con- DJ controller. And so, like, I just went from there. I started practicing, and I was like, you know what? I want to, I want to, like, I want to do this shit for real. And then I actually came across the opportunity where uh, Wasted actually was sent me some email to come out and join the team or whatever. Like, they were doing a recruiting So I just, I ended up like, you know what? I should go do this. Like, I ended up going out there, went to the meeting. And then like a couple months later, I ended up having a show. My first show was with Lucati as a headliner. And I didn't know what to expect. I just knew that I had to grind to fucking be able to fucking put on a show. But, you know. I got you. It was definitely like an opening set, so there wasn't too many people there. But at, I mean, that's that's where it all started for sure. Like where I finally was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna be doing this shit." I got you, right on. When you when you talk about the grind, um, you know, I feel like a lot of people can get a little curious as to what when you say the grind, what that grind means. Would you want to tell like your fans and like your listeners a little bit more about what that grind entails? Because I feel like not a lot of people know what goes on behind the scenes. Like you know whether that's you like creating your set or you know practicing your mixing or or whatever it is that you know you're you're doing to you know to get you further into a DJ slot to perform. You know what, you know what 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 about the grind? Is it that you know that comes with like you know trying to do what you're trying to do? You know what I'm saying? Like I think most of the grind is definitely like social media. Like you really have to promote yourself and really like put in the effort to really make yourself known like nobody's gonna do that shit for you no yeah i agree facts i mean you got the homies and stuff and stuff that are gonna uh promote you as well like the ones that really fuck with you but at the end of the day they're not gonna be taking those next steps to get you where you need to be no yeah i I know i definitely yeah i see what you're saying this definitely comes with actually like Working on music, putting in the hours for that, putting in the hours for, like, you know, designing whatever for your brand. Like, and like that's, if you're really going to push yourself to the limits, like, you got to do whatever it takes. No, I, I agree to that. You know, not a lot of these things, and especially, like, when I when I think about what your vision is, you know, I'm thinking you're thinking big, you know. So when you think big... You know, a lot of those steps that you have to take to get to those goals, they're not going to be easy, you know. So I feel like a lot of people, uh, you know, get away from the responsibility of, like, attaining those goals because the responsibilities sometimes are difficult to do. And sometimes it, the consistency of doing those steps to accomplish those goals, like, it could be pretty tedious for a lot of people, especially that are not consistent with, you know, uh, writing out a plan and, like, ch- trying to figure out, you know, how is it to get from plan A to plan or, you know, from one point A to point B type of feel. Yeah, it's stressful because you you gotta be the one to believe in yourself. Like, and if you don't believe in yourself, then you're not gonna make it. No, I, I believe it, man. No, I, and that's the other thing too. You gotta believe in yourself, and it's, and there's gonna be times where you, where even you're not gonna feel the support from others, and like, it, it's definitely something where like it's a hard emotion that you face because it's like, all right, well, I'm not really feeling the love from like the fans or something but it's like really you yourself you gotta be self-motivated to keep yourself going because not you know sometimes it's gonna be rainy days from your fans where like you're just not you're not getting that energy or anything like that and it's just like well it's all good because like energy energy can all be interpreted by like how you how, how you think the day is gonna go and so if you could think that your goals is gonna go great you can feel positive about yourself you feel like you know everything that you do is just gonna right. be the best move that you make you know just building that confidence building that self-motivation like, in a way, like you're you're your own biggest fan exactly you know and 
You know, I don't diss on anyone that like follows these influencers on like self motivation. You know, on like you know, then people like Grant Cardone or like all those people. Cause you know, if if, if it takes for them to watch a video to get them motivated, like that's that's good. Like you want to be in that motivated like you want to be in that motivated stage. You know, cause that motivation definitely does a lot for you. It definitely kicks your gears. You start seeing things come into play. You're like, oh shit! Like I'm actually I'm actually walking these steps. Like I'm getting closer to Plan B or, or Point B. Like, I don't know why I keep saying Plan B. Point B. <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting I'm getting closer to the finish line, and you know you just see everything. Uh, you see the whole process, and it's just it becomes a bit more comfortable. And then uh, you know the more you do it, the more comfortable it gets. And I definitely agree with you when you say it's just like social media. You know, just promoting yourself. Now everyone's gonna do it for you, and you just gotta really put in the work. And also speaking on shows that you've played, because uh, I'm sure uh, you've uh, I've seen flyers where you played a, uh, a bunch of shows with headliners, man. I mean, how does it, how does it feel to be in those shows with the headliners? You know, playing a slot. Like, do you get nervous when you play uh, these shows or, or any show for that matter? Like, do you get nervous or what kind of nervous, what kind of things happen when you, like when you're nervous? If you do get nervous, uh, sometimes you know, like I do get nervous, but you know, once you get up there, like. There's no turning back. Like, you just got to fucking make sure that shit is A1 or at, at least the best you can do at that point. Like, you know, sometimes there's shit that you you wouldn't, you're not even, like, the people out there on the dance floor, they're not even thinking about, like, that the DJ is a human being. Like, they're going through all these different emotions. Like, you don't know what was, it's like going to work on a bad day. Like, you don't know what was going on. Like, no, yeah, but you still got to show up to, you just still got to show up. Like, <laughs> No, yeah, yeah. Despite if you're having a bad day or whatever the fuck happened, like in that morning before, or even if you're playing the day, you know, yeah. the night before, you know, it's just like you go and like the priority is definitely just making sure that the crowd has a good time. You throw a show and you got the selection on. Yeah. Do you, do you often uh, feel yourself get nervous a lot before you, you get on stage, or for the most part you're just like, all right, no, I'm good, like I'm chilling. It depends, like if I'm. If my set list is ready or not, like sometimes, like I'm not even gonna lie, I procrastinate and fucking, I'll do my my set list the day of because I want it to be like, <laughs> like I don't want it to be super planned, you know, like, cause when I'm at home, like I'm grooving, I'm I'm not even worried about a set list, and I'm and that shit comes out a one, it just I don't know maybe sometimes like, it's not perfect every time though, like you know, <clears throat> no yeah for sure. You know, I, I get nervous way before. Every time uh, I've been playing these past couple of shows, I've been getting nervous, like, the five, ten minutes. I think, Robert, you expressed yourself, too. Like, on the last show that you played, like, you were telling me, like, oh, yeah, dude, I, I don't know why I feel fucking nervous and shit. Uh, how does that feel, man? How do, how do you first thing feel, Robert, real quick, like, when you're when you're feeling like that? Like, how do, do you feel anxious? Are you, like... So like it's it's just at first like you don't know what you're getting yourself into like you don't you don't know what you're walking into you know so exactly what Corey said like uh, it's like showing up on a bad day you don't you just really don't know what you're gonna get but once you're up there and once you can feel the vibe a little like for me I know my track selection is fucking is there so at that point it's just I need to make sure it's right <clears throat> okay and that's just how I feel about it All right, I got you. So when you do your sets, like you say uh, on the day of, like you pretty much curate your playlist and everything. Can I do the same so thing too? I want to get the fresh shit. For the most part, like I'll I'll put together something to start up, and then like it'll that'll just set me into the groove where like I can just go from there at that point. Like, oh okay. So I don't I don't want I don't like to have like a specific set because then I feel like I'll tend to want to just play that specific set every time. You know. I got you. So. You know, sometimes I'll just fucking open my tracks on record box when I'm up there and not even be in a fucking playlist. Like I'll just fucking go to wherever I, I need to go at that point. Like, mm. cause I, I do like playing like an open format kind of fucking playlist too sometimes because I don't know. I feel like that's more of like a festival style, like is like kind of more like open format sometimes for like the fucking really big artists out there like they have <clears throat> tracks that they're playing from all genres yeah you know? yeah, yeah. and i want to be able to fucking deliver something like that but like with some original tracks you know no for sure and and that's and that's the key thing you know just being able to implement like you know as much original as you can and make it more of like an all original set uh but hey but also too like 
track selection is definitely like important. Like you know, yeah. if you gotta go outside of your catalog, your personal like catalog, and play some other, you know, people's music. Because again, like that's what teaching is all about. Is is all if you can showcase your music, the you know, more power to you. But if you could freaking, uh, you know, get a banger in there that's not yours, but you know, you're able to show some love to another producer, another group that you know made the record, and you know, uh, make the crowd live with it. I mean, that's I, I just. You know, put it in the set for sure. Put it in the set yeah. like it. Track selection is like I think is very important. Uh, you know, there's some times where like there's I do follow like a playlist, but for the most part, if I, I'm I'm pretty good at switching up on the playlist and like going freestyle. You know, if if a crowd's not fucking with what I got planned, then I'll be like, okay. Well, I got some other shit. You know, I mean, it's not within uh the playlist, but you know, I'm gonna have, like you said. I like the way you right. said like you just you just go with it. And then you just you just like you weren't expecting to play this, but you're playing it. Yeah, and because. you might even think that because you weren't gonna play it, you may not get the reaction that you want. But you actually do get a reaction that's like fucking satisfying. That could be the crowd fucking with it. Like, All right, cool. Well, I guess I'm gonna take it in this direction. And you take it in that direction, and you, you feed it in that direction, and then the crowd just keeps on giving you that energy that you want. And uh, and that's I think that's why I like, kind of like. Being like you said, multi genre with my sets because if you if the crowd's not really fucking with this set, especially if the person before you played the exact same genre that you're you're like bumping, you know maybe they want to hear something a bit more outside of that area. Maybe they want to hear some house if they just heard some crazy right. dubstep set. And uh, I think that's what's one of the benefits of being multi genre is just being able to comfortably just transition into another area and be comfortable in that area. Whereas maybe if a dubstep producer is like dropping an all crazy bass dubstep set and right. the crowd's not fucking with it, well, maybe that crazy strictly bass producer like doesn't have another playlist to like maybe try some shit out. Right. And because uh, you I, don't know how you don't know who's out there in the crowd like who likes what like. For sure, yeah. No, no doubt about it. And I highly respect all producers that try to reach in different other lanes. And you know, and much love too. All the producers are just sticking one lane. You know, that's that's really dope as well. Uh, cause but going into the other different lanes, you know, going from like, you know, doing a trap record, and then next really doing a bass house record, and next really doing a dubstep record. It's just, it's it's definitely um, it's interesting, and I like it. Cause again, it's just it opens you up more to different markets. You're able to please a little bit more others than just like a one particular crowd uh market. You know, right. you're able to. Attract more people, and only that. Maybe you could get on more festivals. You know, if you if you play a all an all diverse set, you know, maybe you're not just getting booked for bass shows. And you're now you're getting booked for shows like maybe Dream State, like we were mentioning earlier, Dream State, or right, maybe Bass Rush. Yeah. So, I mean, all all these particular <laughs> possibilities when you just don't stick into one genre. But uh, but I mean, you you you're doing like you know more than just one genre, so that's cool. With your sets, is it uh, what sets are you doing primarily when you play these shows? Is it a bass set? Is it a house set? It's usually like a house set or sometimes techno, but I like to throw in some other shit in there, so. Okay. What do you like uh, more, house or techno? Definitely house. Okay. But I fucking love pretty much all EDM, so if I could, I would throw every genre in my set, but it's not that easy. <laughs> I got you, I got you. What are, uh, what are you, some of your, like, Pet peeves that you come across that you come across when you're a DJ, like whether that's like people asking you for requests or people coming up to you to like go back to back with you last minute, like on a show if you don't want to, like, like what do you what are, what are some of your personal pet peeves that like you wish wouldn't occur like uh, to you or any other DJ? <laughs> um, I guess if you, if you have any, if you have any, if you don't, then I guess like, requests would be like one thing because sure. definitely like you go up there planning to play like whatever you got on whatever you think is on or whatever's on your USB or whatever. But I mean, this one time I showed up to play a set and this dude in the crowd was like telling me to play this style of music. And I knew I wasn't playing that style of music that day. So I was, I just, I was like, I don't have it. Like I didn't even have it on my USB play. He asked me to play a specific song. I can't remember what song it was, but I, I definitely didn't have it. And he he was upset, but I was like, I mean, what do you? What did you expect me to just have the exact song that? Like, I don't have a laptop. Like, I have my fucking USB. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and even if you do have a laptop, sometimes you just don't got internet connection where you're at. Yeah. If you got, if they ask for a song that you don't got, it's like I wish, I wish a lot more people that requested songs. 
can like see that. But then they, I mean, I can see why they don't understand that. But it's just like, you know, if you just see, if you see I don't got internet connection, you know, at least offer some shit. Like, hey, you got a hotspot? Fuck it. Like, you know, make the pitch better. <laughs> Fuck it, just make the pitch better. But no, that's one of the things too. Like requests. I think it's like uh, if I'm playing somewhere, if I'm playing a husky set anywhere, because there's DJs where like maybe or just a set where or shows that I'll play where it's not primarily like. Cause I'll do shows where like if it's not requiring me to play like all my music, if it's just requiring me to play like maybe hip hop for that matter, like in that case, you know, it really doesn't matter. But um, you know, let's say I do a husky show and everything, someone's asking me to request something like specifically, like nah, dude, like I, like for me, I got all these originals set, especially when you got originals. If you got like a storyline to tell and a journey when you're with your mixing with your originals, like you kind of want to curate it that way. And when, you know, someone asks for a request, that could, and, like, the request is not, maybe not, like, within the BPM, or maybe you just don't got it, like, in general. Like, they probably just don't understand that. Sometimes they take that as, like, what like if, you're dissing What if they, like, play Toxic Love right now? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I got the song. I got the remix, too. Yeah, I'll play it. I'll play it. I'll play both versions. <laughs> and a lot of times, like, yeah, we do have our USBs. So, it's, like, when we try to freaking... You know, when we try to freaking look for the track, it's like whatever we have with whatever we have with the USB. Even if you try to offer me a hotspot, it's like I got a USB. <laughs> like, I can't. I gotta go. I can't go on Safari. I can't go on uh, Chrome and like download a track real quick, like on a USB. Like, and even if I did have a laptop, like this place gotta have a, a internet connection, a Wi-Fi, or yeah. if you got, or you gotta offer me at least a hotspot, or you gotta tip me. Like you know, tip. You know, hey. Tipping, if you tip your DJ, if you offer it to, hey, advice, if you offer to tip a DJ, a request, we're more likely to listen. We're more likely to listen. Because if you're requesting and, like, you're just, like, you're just trying to get, you know, your bir- your girl, you just turned, like, 21 or whatever the fuck, you want to play your favorite song, and like, we don't got it, like, <laughs> you're not offering a tip, like, we're not going to listen. But if you offer a tip, you know, all right, what's the request? Like, we're open. So just a little tip for anyone that's just watching. It's just, like, a regular club goer that wants to give a request, but... Uh yeah, request is one of them. You know, like if you're gonna ask me something, like especially when I'm playing, don't like just don't do it. I've had I've had rappers come up to me too. Well, they'll be like, "Hey, play my song, bro, right now." Like I got the USB on me. It's like, bro, like you don't just come up to me on the day of my set, like while I'm playing some shit. Especially if I got something planned. Like that's out for me. That's just not the way to do things. Like tell me at least be- tell me at least before as I'm like pack like packing. You know, or at least when I'm setting up. Like tell me beforehand, like, hey, if you want me to play a song, like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll probably, you know, I'll probably make it work. But if you're like coming up to me, like, right when I'm DJing, out during my sets, like, well, I mean, I I'm guess, doing my shit. I guess right it now. also depends on the song to ask for too, like, cause same. You never know, like, what if it just becomes that fucking mashup that you start playing every every day, every fucking set? Like, no, no, <laughs> no, I, and that's the other thing too. That it's like a, it's one of those things where it's like, fuck, well, maybe the request that they got is got is a banger that I don't know. And maybe I'll get surprised. I'm like, damn, Loki. Hey, you got some more requests? Hey, come back. Hey, don't leave. Hold up. Come back. I need more requests. I need more requests. This is a fire. This is bigger. But, <laughs> no, but right. I need another. I need another twenty. Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. You're getting paid and you're getting bangers. Damn, that's the life. And on top of your freaking fee, just living life, bro. Living life. <laughs> no, I feel it. Yeah, request is one of my biggest pet peeves. How do you feel about people coming up to you? Like, like, let's say you're about to play, you're about to drop a set, and someone comes up to you, like, randomly. Just someone that comes up randomly is like, hey, bro, like, I'm a DJ, I got some shit. Like, like I want, let me go back to back with you real quick. Like, what are you saying? Like, how do you feel about those type of situations? Uh, I've never really had that happen to me, so I wouldn't know. But Oh, for sure. I mean, if someone were to just come up to me and just, like, trying to talk to me before my set, I, would, I mean, I guess I wouldn't really mind that. Like, hmm. Maybe they could give you some fucking type of vibe that would, you know, like boost your fucking confidence or something, like you know. I got you. I'm right, gonna play a different perspective. Let's say you just, let's say you just got a big show, like you're opening up for like a headline. Let's say you're playing like EDC. Would would that would it be different? Would you just let anyone go back to everything? Would you want to like just cure? You want to just like make that more like for your own like solo set. If it was my first time playing EDC, for sure, like, I want my own set, like. Okay. But if it was, like, I got fucking several EDC sets in or whatever, or festival sets like that, like, then I wouldn't mind a back-to-back for sure. Like, I think that would be fun. For sure. Have you have you done back-to-back sets or you've done solo? Yeah, I've done back-to-backs. Um, 
My first back to back, I think, was with Sil holding at at uh, S Bar. Oh, when Choli was supposed yeah. to be there. Oh, I remember that. I was like, yeah, I was like DJ, and I was like, wait, that wait, was funny. wait, who's supposed to be? Because no one told me about the change. I was like, wait, hold up. It was DJ, and it's like, oh yeah, I'm Corey. I'm and that's where I met you. I was like, oh yeah, what's up? I was like, where's Choli? And he's like, oh yeah, something happened with Choli. Oh blah, blah and. Yeah, I'm I'm DJing for him now. I'm like, all right, well for sure. Well, I, I didn't matter because you're playing some yeah. you're playing some fire. I, thought, I was like, I, I thought was like, the hey. turnout was pretty pretty good. So it was good. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, hey, I don't. It doesn't matter. You're playing some shit. Cause, but I was just wondering where Choli is because Choli's supposed to be your DJ. And you're like, no, nah, well, Choli something happened with Choli, but like I took care of it and like I'm I'm playing right now. I'm like, off oh, the show, uh, and like you know, it proceeded. It show proceeded. And, like you, yeah. you and still holding. Actually, I take that. I take that back though, because that wasn't my first back to back. Because my first back to back was the Lucati show. I did go back to back with uh, Seven Four Seven. Shout out Seven Four Seven if you're watching this. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Can you just vibe with anyone on a back to back, or for the most part, yeah. As long as I have like a playlist that's like I have some of the genre that they're trying to play. Like, okay, I got you. Obviously, if you're just switching back and forth from different genres, like that's not gonna be. Really like yeah, the crowd. Gonna, the crowd's yeah, not gonna be not like. For sure. I don't know, but um, yeah. For, but obviously, you wouldn't be going back to back with somebody like that. So. Oh yeah. Um, but I mean, there's so many different genres of house. So. I mean, if somebody's playing something like. Sometimes it, it doesn't match well, but for the okay. most part, I think I think I can back to back with most people. Right on. Right on. Now, before we hop on to EM Confessions. Uh, what would you say be like your favorite subgenre of house? I'll definitely say bass house. Bass house. Yeah, I feel the same way. <laughs> I listen to tech house. I listen to jungle house. I listen to speed house. I listen to minimal. I listen to tech house. Like, and it's just... I'd say bass house and electro house. Ooh, she. <laughs> no man, electro house. And if I could add a third one, like I don't know. I know people always be hearing what I be saying with this fidget house. <laughs> You know, like some throwback veteran shit, but yeah, yeah, for sure. Base house is one of the. It's like for me, base house reminds me of like dubstep, yeah, and like in like house territory, because like the synths are very dubstep like, yep. But the drum structure, it's very house like, and you morph that, and it's like, oh shit, like now we got a different tone on house music, right? It's it's crazy, but. Let's get it, man. Let's get it for the next segment. We got EDM confessions. Have you uh, have you seen our in our past episodes? Uh, you know what this segment's all about by chance or first time hearing about this. You said what? EDM confessions. EDM confessions. Uh, yeah. I think I think so. Right on. So this is a segment that we do here at the Spotlight po- uh, Podcast, where essentially we just uh, ask each other a bunch of scenarios, a bunch of questions. It kind of opens up a little bit more of our personality, uh, lets the listeners and lets the audience know a little bit more about who we are. Uh, and like what our music personality is, and what we would do in certain scenarios, and how we would answer certain questions. Um, so I have three questions to ask you, and you have three questions to ask me. So, uh, and for those who are uh, watching as well, if you guys want to also listen on SoundCloud, we have the link on the description. If you guys want to listen on SoundCloud, but once again, thank you guys so much for being on YouTube, and make sure to subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up on the video. We really do appreciate the support and everything; it means a lot. Uh, with that being said, let's get started with EDM Confessions. So, Corey, I'll go ahead and uh, I'll ask you a question. So, because I want, I seen this question right here. I'm like, yeah, I want to ask him and I want to know what it is. So, first question, Corey, what is your least favorite EDM genre? Mm, I would, I would probably say. Hmm. Probably hard style. Hard style? Yeah. Huh. Why? Why, why, why do you say hard style? Uh, I don't know. I just don't. I'm not too fond of it, I guess. Okay. You know, I think. I, think I, don't, like, hard... I don't like the bump, 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 bump. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Some people like it. I'm, I'm, not one. <laughs> I'm, is, I'm not one of them. Is it just like the kick just seems too, like, like it just seems too aggressive or like. Cause I feel yeah, like for me I feel when like, I hear hardstyle, like after I feel like the kick has every frequency that can possibly be in there. <laughs> hey, no, I believe it. Cause like <laughs> that kick, like it's not just like a low end kick. It's like a freaking 
all frequency kick. You hear the highs, <laughs> you hear the freaking mids, and like it's just like a it's like its own freaking synth. Like to be honest, its own freaking kick. It's a kick synth. Like mm, 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 mm. <laughs> like sometimes those hard style synths or kicks, they're they're hollow. Like sometimes those kicks are hollow, and like they'll just like make it loud, and it's just like it's not punchy, but you can tell it's just very like it's just very like in the background and loud. Um, for me, hard style, like it, it's cool, but I definitely would say like hard style. I would put it like in like one of my least favorite genres for sure. What would you say is your least favorite? Uh, my least favorite, like I've said in past episodes, I'll repeat it, is Tropical House. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's like even like official <laughs> genre, but like it's just like the house music you hear on like travel logs on YouTube. Like it just seems very cliche, fucking royalty free, fucking house music type shit. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, but like another genre that I, I'm not really like. You know, I, I can only listen to it for like one track and then maybe I'm just like, all right, fuck it, switch it. It could be um, like just Tech House. I don't know. Like just Tech House doesn't really do it for me. <laughs> like it's groovy. Yeah. I, I understand it. But for me, it just yeah, doesn't really it, it does hit. get a little repetitive sometimes. Like, yeah, I feel like it is like, I don't know. But it comes with, it comes with me as like a. But there's I, I guess there's like different levels of tech house too because there's like your very simple fucking tech house and then there's like more tech house that's kind of leaning a little bit towards bass house but it's still like tech house. Right, right. So <laughs> and and I've heard those type of tracks though, like yeah. in what you're saying, and I've I, I like I like a little bit more of those tech house style tracks because it's more modern sounding and yeah. like it's a little bit more sense involved, and then like the tech house that I be here mostly it's just like you can tell it's like more like. Uh, Kick, kick structure driven, like more drum driven. It's not really too focusing on synths, but more on the groove, more yeah. on the flow of the bass line going through the percussions and the drums. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It just doesn't really do it for me. But I get it. I understand it. All right. So I understand why y'all be vibing to it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's one of my least favorite. But what you got? What you got for me? What, what question you got for me, bro? Okay. So it says, uh, what EDM genre best describes your personality? Hmm. Yeah, that's a really good one. That's a really good question. That's a really good question. Damn, bro. It's, it, things I'm gonna run out of questions. <laughs> I'm gonna run out of. I'm, gonna, oh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna run out of answers for this. Uh. Hmm. You know what? I'm gonna just go and say mid tempo. I'm gonna say mid tempo because for me it's like a. It's it's different because it's some shit that we didn't we wasn't really hearing uh like in the past like it's definitely something we heard within the twentieth century yeah and it's it's for me it sounds like slowed house slow down bass house or slow down electro house yeah and and and, and that is like dubstep and house together and I fuck with it I I think I would say the same thing like fucking mid tempo best describes my personality I like that mid tempo sound for sure. Yeah, and the reason why I say that too is because like it, it's a morph of like, and again, this is just me like how I'm perceiving this particular genre. Like when I hear mid tempos, a lot, I get a lot of like influences from like the electro house era, and I get a lot of influences from like the dubstep uh, area in mid tempo. And I just like I just like the different aspects of EDM music being coming into play into the slow down uh, version of like of what bass music could be. Yeah, I, think, I think it could be very cinematic for sure. Like mm. I like that that mid tempo can kind of create like a story almost. Like right, and I feel like for me, my personality is kind of like that too. It's a story where like where like I feel like my personality sometimes like I can build up my personality uh, depending on like how I'm feeling and like sometimes I could tell that could be like telling a story or or it could even be uh, as a form of like how your emotions come into play in your personality. And mid-tempo just does a really good job as to, you know, capturing different types of influences and then morphing into one genre. And I feel like my personality is kind of like that. Me getting influences from other types of, like, right. different environments, different uh, industries, different areas, and then just trying to, like, all put it all into play into one thing. And for me, it's like mid-tempo. So I, I think same thing, uh, like, for you as well, like, yeah. like I had mentioned. Yeah, mid-tempo is nice. Yeah, it is. <laughs> All right, homie. Oh, shit. Oh, damn. Here we go. You're in charge of the lineup and can only book three DJs. Who are you booking? <laughs> yeah, dude. I was going to ask you this shit. I was, I, I was going to ask you this. Yeah, you had three DJs, bro. Damn. Charge of the lineup. That's hard. Uh, 
<laughs> nah, I feel it, bro. I feel it. <laughs> Man, you might need to give me some time to think about this. Hold on. You know, it's all good. It's all good. It's all right. You can edit it. Well, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll help you think of it. Uh, indoor or outdoor? Outdoor? Outdoor. Small show, big show? I'm thinking, like... The big, the biggest show like you can think of like okay. only three artists. All right, for sure, got you. Okay, man. Let's say you're opening up for these three artists at this very show too. Who's playing after you? Who would you want to play after you? I'm playing last. Oh, oh <laughs> damn! Hey, okay, playing last then. Who would you want? Who would you want to open up for you then? What's good? Damn. Okay. Uh oh uh, shit. Um. Damn, I'm trying to think. So many great artists. A very hard question. Very hard question. Because I'm pretty sure you dig a fuck lot of fucking artists, just like I do as well. This question is a very hard question for me as well. Uh, what about you, real quick, Robert? While Corey's thinking, what, three artists, real quick, for you. All right, so that's gonna be easy because I'm very influenced on trap right now. So I'm gonna go with Yojas. I'm Shout gonna, out Yojas. I'm gonna go with this dude named Robu. Robu, okay. Yeah, and then there's this other guy named like C dot M or something like that. Fire, and they're all in like in the same like weird half tempo like. Trap shit, you know. So I, I really fuck with that shit. All right, for sure. That'd be mine. Man, also too, that are watching and listening. Let us know in the comments what you guys' lineup would be for the three artists. I'm gonna say Rez, Black okay. Tiger, Sex Machine. Oh, okay. And Ganja White Knight. Damn, that's the fucking lineup, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Like, all uh, all these three artists that you mentioned have their own tours. Exactly. So, to put them all in one lineup, bro, that's fire. That's some shit. Fuck it. That's the, hey, that's the lineup, bro. <laughs> and you're playing after those three. Yes, sir. Run that shit. Let's go. There you go. Fuck. That, that was hard. That was hard. I fucking... Yeah, that was... I like that lineup, honestly. <laughs> one of my favorite lineups that I've heard, for sure, through the series... One of my favorite lineups. <laughs> All right, man. What, what question do you have for me? Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you had to listen to one EDM track for 10 hours, which one would you choose? Oh, dude. Glades and Heckler. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. Whatever it is. Heckler, Glades, Glades, Heckler, whatever. 404. I'm going to just run that. <laughs> Honestly, I'm going to run that. I listen to that shit so many times. Honestly, I do not get tired of it. Like up and even if I did get tired of it at one point, I end up loving it again. 404, Heckler and Blades. Like if you guys don't know about it, you guys I'm sure you guys heard of it. If you guys have been like very paying attention to like sets, live performances, especially like in the bass trap music realm, like especially within two, three, four, five years, like 404. I'll fuck it. I'm down for that shit. Ten hours. I'll listen to that shit. Plus eleven. Clipping. Full compression, all mastered. Bass boosted. I will listen to it 10 hours. Heckler Glades 404. I think I'm still never saying that. I think I'm never saying that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. 404. That's my answer. <laughs> Alright then. Um, Corey Bones, uh, Light Show or Headbang? And this is our edition of Truth or Dare. So, Light Show being Truth and Headbang being Dare. Dare, but like, dare, I'm confused on the dare part. Like, this is pretty much just truth or dare. So, you want to do a light show, that's truth. If you want to do a headbang, that's dare. So, if you want, you want me to just ask you a question, you can just do light show. But like a dare in here? like I'm Or something, yeah. Uh, You know, you got a 40, maybe I could dare you to chug that shit, maybe. All right, fuck I it, dare. All right, well, I'll, I, don't I'll know dare if any, I don't know if anybody's, uh, what is it called? Uh, headbang? You trying headbang, to headbang? Headbang, I'm trying to... Hey, that's what's trying to. That's trying to. I don't know if anybody's uh, Charles headbang before, but fuck it. Yeah, we have Watch a couple. Yeah, we had a couple. 
Uh, but yeah, dude. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll dare you to you know chug your forty, bro. You know, let people know what you've been drinking, <laughs> what you've been sipping on lately, bro. I've been sipping on Modelo. Hey. I don't know if I can show that on camera. I do. Yeah, just run that shit. <laughs> I mean, it's not like we're, um, you know, we're not corporate or nothing like that. Oh, damn. Yeah, I'm hey, he invited to the barbecue. <sighs> just like that. Just like that. Honestly, Corey, that was some hard ass shit. I fuck <laughs> with that. I like how you pulled up in, with like two forties. Like you're just ready to go. You're like, run that shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's what's up, bro. Shit. I remember last time I got fucked up on forties. I had that shit taped around my hands. So I remember it was like it was my birthday, and like they were like, "Hey, tape these two for mm. tape these forties to your hand." And I just had a forty taped to each hand, and I remember just drinking all that shit and throwing up, bro. Goddamn. <laughs> Edwards uh, forty hints. <laughs> yeah, so you you could pretty much kind of envision <clears throat> what I was going through and shit. I can't really do forties as much anymore. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a little uh, Estrella Jalisco can type of dude now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, fuck with them. Not bad beers. If whoever's watching, listen. Let us know in the comments what kind of beer and drinks you guys like too. We want to know. All right. Well, <clears throat> that's like show or headbang. So, um, what what's the last question that you have for me? What is plur? What is <clears throat> plur? What Peace, is plur? love. What? What huh? is plur, right? Yeah. Peace, love, unity, and respect. That's what plur is. But if you guys want to, like, for example, <clears throat> plur. But what does that mean to you? So to me, plur is just, uh, for me, it's uh, showing love to one another and looking out for each other. I think that's just like the the foundation of plur. It, plur is also, I would say, is just uh, being able to welcome anyone that's, like, new to the scene uh, without, like, judging of, like, uh, of like oh like yeah you've never heard of this before blah 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 because you know EDM you know it's it's heavily marketed now but not people know about it but uh, plurs you know it's a term that they use especially like within uh, festivals and shows and rage and it's just, just a, you know it's what it is peace unity I'm sorry peace love unity and respect and uh, yeah I mean, people think plur uh, yeah you do see people you know locking arms like switching bracelets like. You know, that's like a process of it, but it's not like it's not like the main basis of plur. It's just like for me, what me what it means to me is like uh, again, just uh, loving each other as like brothers and sisters uh, as you guys are there, looking out for each other and having a great time, and you know, not not being petty or not trying to be problematic with anyone. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah. like I said, nothing too deep. It's just looking out for each other, uh, being nice, being respectful. Uh, Honestly, just that, that's simple to me. It's just, you know, being a respectful human being and just looking out for each other. I think it's just plur to me. And that, that could just be, uh, and plur could, could be interpreted as just like, you know, just being a caring person and just uh, having a great time with those around you, uh, not being judgmental and, right. uh, you know, just enjoying each other's <clears throat> presence and uh, doing good by each other. Uh, for me, that's plur. I, I, I would say for me that player goes beyond just the festivals and raves like no facts it's about treating each other with respect at all times you know not just at and not even just each other like this planet that we're on like we're this is this is earth like we're not we're we're living here like we're we're taking advantage of this planet no yeah and man. I think player could save this planet you know no i mean yeah i get that i get definitely uh you know start let it start, could start uh influencing more other people to spread that message and you know now we can start uh making more efforts and actions towards taking care of more of the planet you know whether that's picking up trash or you know not fucking you know emitting gas from our cars or whatever the fuck it is you know trying to be more environmental friendly you know that could also be an act of uh, you know, be a plur. Yeah. Not some shit that could just be within festivals or raves or shows. It could be something that's amongst just everything around the world, you know. Just life in general. Yeah. Definitely just like it's its own its own commandments of like It's like a lifestyle almost like Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah for sure. No, and you see a lot of people too. Um a lot of people definitely uh are are very plur when you go um, again, not, maybe not just not shows or raids, but when you go out at a store, you know, you're at a park, like just someone just right. being very energetic, very positive, you know, just 
you know, being their best selves. Like, right, and they could know. probably not even know what player means, but they're still being, like... Yeah, they're, it's just <laughs> them, and they, it's just like, damn, like, what the fuck? Like, if you heard a player, like, that's what you are. <laughs> yeah, I met a couple of people like that, and it's just, uh, it's... It's a nice, it's a nice, it's a nice, uh, it's a nice experience. And I always try to like keep that. I always try to put that possibility, uh, that positivity, positivity yeah, too. Just spread, spread the positivity for sure. Yeah. No doubt about that. No doubt about that, bro. But that's the end of EDM confessions, bro. Hope you enjoyed that segment. <clears throat> I'm sure our, uh, listeners and fans, uh, were able to learn more about you as an artist and get to know you, uh, your personality as to, you know, who would you book, uh, Light show or headbang. I guess you fuck with the dares. You know you were. You know you checked the forty. <laughs> uh, we got to know like your least favorite EDM genre too, uh, alongside with mine as well. So, um, dude, thanks again for being a part of the, the spotlight series here at Lucid Tempo, uh, episode twenty six. Was there anything that you want to tell uh, the listeners or anything that's uh, tuning in right here? You know, any announcements, any shows that you'll be playing. Uh, anything, uh, any music releases you might be might be releasing within the next uh, couple weeks or months. You know, this is your floor right here to let everybody know what is it that we should be expecting from Corey Bones within the next uh, couple of weeks or so. So first of all, just follow follow me on Instagram, Corey Bones. You know, I'll be doing uh, all of my promotions on there for whatever I'm doing. Um, <clears throat> you can expect me to release some type of track soon i'm trying to get some shit ready so that you guys can finally listen to what i got in store for you guys um i'll be playing on the 20th and the 21st uh in riverside i'll be playing at mezcal for the uh the the show on the, on the 20th oh wait that's the 20th or the 20th yeah you know yeah you're right yeah may 20th all right, and then I got another show in uh in Riverside as well at uh, the Hideaway on the twenty first for the the Invasion. That oh, right fun, on yeah. for sure. I'm excited for both events. So. Yeah, well, dude, I'm excited to have you for May twentieth, uh, for Planet Eight Hundred Eight. That's gonna be happening. Oh yeah, Planet Eight Hundred Eight. That's what I wanted. To, I wanted to remember what it was called. Oh yeah, I try. It, when, uh, yeah, uh, Planet Eight Hundred Eight. You're gonna be playing. Bro, that flyer is <laughs> sick. Yeah, dude. Uh, yeah. Animal did that. You know, he did the flyer. He, you know, he made that uh, all together. Uh, you know, big shout out to Animal, who's also the the other co-founder of Low End. Uh, you know, really glad to have you play that show. Uh, you know, really excited to hear your set again. Uh, do, you, do should we be hearing some many Corey Bones uh, music in that set, or we're gonna be waiting a little longer? Uh, I guess you'll have to come and find out. Hey, well, I'm about to be. I'm <laughs> I'm gonna be there. Obviously, I'm gonna be there. I'm really excited uh, to hear your set. Um, any more shows? Is that, is that pretty much it for now? Any live streams? Uh, nothing that's set in stone, but got you. Just stay on the lookout. Follow me on Instagram, and I'll make sure that you guys know what's going on. Awesome. And once again, if you guys want to know what's uh, information for the social media of Corey Bones, is right there uh, by where you see the table over on that side. Go ahead and follow him on social media. Make sure you stay updated on any show announcement, any music releases that he's going to be doing. Uh, once again, uh, make sure to follow me, uh, Husky Bass, for any music releases, any announcements that I'll be doing for shows, merchandise. And make sure to follow the channel as well. Uh, at Lucid Tempo make sure to subscribe to the channel give us a thumbs up on the video we really do appreciate it make sure to follow Robert as well we do have the link in the description thank you guys so much for tuning in to the Spotlight Series episode 26 here at Lucid Tempo with my special guest Corey Bones thank you guys for, uh, for coming out so much I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty Thanks, sure bro. all the listeners and the viewers are really glad to hear a little bit more about you as an artist uh, get to know more about you uh, you know with your personality and, and the, all the questions that you answered so uh, much love, man. You know, I'm really glad to have you here, bro. Thank you so much. And I'm really excited to see your set on May 20th, man. Really excited. I'm excited. Shit, I just got some stickers. Fucking hit me up. I'll send you a fucking free sticker. Yeah, also, too. Also, too, before we end the episode, we wanted to put your sticker right here, man. Hey. You know, put it on the wall, bro. So that way. <clears throat> I'm down. Yeah, dude. So you have a sticker on you right now? Uh, shit, it's in my bag. Oh, then. I mean, we got some time. You're gonna, you yeah, know, we'll do it on the video right here. Be down. So, whew, episode 26 right here with special guest Corey Bones. Yeah, right here with the new studio. Hey, once bro, again. I'm hella hyped about this new studio. Like, Yeah, I'm really hyped about it, too. Let me know what you guys think about the audio, too. You know, let us know. 
Uh, Robert got his own mic microphone as well. <laughs> so you know we're at, we're gonna be able to hear a little bit more clearer, more louder his voice. That's yeah, for some fucking stickers. Cor- you know, hit up Corey Bones for some stickers. You know, hook you up, just hit him up, and yeah, man, just go ahead and put your sticker on the wall. Really excited. May twentieth, dude. That's already around the corner. It's Planet Eight Hundred Eight, dude. It's coming. It's coming. Just hey, EDM shows in general are happening, bro. Like, just a lot in downtown. Hey, dude, shout out uh, Base Alien, bro, and Computer Love for doing those movements uh, right now. That's sick, bro. That's fucking. I'm probably gonna gonna swing by tonight, dude. I'm probably gonna swing by tonight, to be honest. Because I think I'm I'm gonna go to San Bernardino uh, to go catch the Sub Factory show for a bit, and then I'm gonna go to downtown and check that out. There you go. Awesome, bro. Corey Bone, thank you so much for coming through, bro. It was a yeah, pleasure. I appreciate man. you guys. Oh, dude. Again, this is sick as fuck. Hey, dude. <laughs> the stickers are sick as fuck. Hey, that's your logo, bro. So your logo's sick as fuck, bro. Thank Honestly. You. Hey, thanks again for tuning in, everybody. And we'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace.